Welcome to the Nicholas 11 X12 technology. Today I'd like to show you a quick comparison on what is better. As you may know, water cooling is a great thing for enthusiasts and if you're one or just want to try something new, then there basically are two brands to go with at the time of this video. I'm not saying there are absolutely no alternatives, because there are some, but these aren't available globally, but these kits should be. These are pre-filled liquid cooling kits and there's no need for maintaining. It's all ready to use. Just install it and blow the dust out of the radiator sometimes and you're done. But today I'm comparing the Corsa Hydro Series H100 with a Thermaltake Water 2.0 Extreme Water Cooling Kit. Both are top of the line coolers. In this video I will show you some major differences and of course the temperatures. Alright, as you can see here are the two water coolers together on the table. If you didn't already figure it out, this is the Corsair H100 with the angular shaped pump and on the right is the Thermaltake Water 2.0 Extreme with the circular pump. I have to say, both coolers look good and when it comes down to the looks, I'd say this is a thing of taste. Corsa for example used black fans, while Thermaltake went with white ones, but of course you could replace these fans if you want to, but this would either decrease or increase the performance. I'm not doing that because we'd like to see the performance that comes right out of the box. The tubes are different as well. Corsa uses some sort of hard plastic. The tubes are fairly hard and so they aren't very flexible. Thermaltake decided to go with rubber tubes and therefore you get much more flexibility. Now what is safer in terms of leaking, well, you can't really tell, it actually depends on the quality. Now I'd like to show you the radiator size. Here's the Corsa unit. It's a standard sized radiator, while Thermaltake went with a larger one. Do you see the difference? So could the Thermaltake unit perform a little bit better? Well, yes and no. There are other things to look out for as well. But keep in mind, it's not always the best thing to have large radiators. Let's say it doesn't fit in your case so it interferes with your motherboard for example. Well, both coolers have their advantages and disadvantages. Now in my system the Corsa cooler looks very clean and because it's all black it would basically match every color scheme. One thing I really like is that you can actually decide on which sides the tubes are going. Just turn the radiator around and you have the tubes on the left. But I decided to put them on the right side so the system looks cleaner and that way it cannot interfere with the rear fan. Here's the Thermaltake cooler. Of course this one also looks very clean, but I have to admit the white fans can make it harder to match a color scheme. But nevertheless it's really eye catchy in my system here. And because I already showed you how the tubes would look like on the right side, I decided to go for the left then. It's all good as you can see, it just looks like the rear fan could interfere with the tubing, but it doesn't. But now I'd like to show you my test system. As you can see I'll be cooling down the Intel Core i7-3770K CPU that is running on stock speeds so nothing is overclocked. The idle test is first. The ambient room temperature is at 20 degrees Celsius by the way, which is 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Good, now on the left is the Corsair H100 and on the right the Water 2.0 Extreme. As you can see both coolers are keeping the temperatures low. With the Corsa unit the CPU idles at around 25 degrees, while with the Thermaltake unit the CPU is running a little warmer and we're talking of 28 degrees here. So on idle the Corsa unit seems to be performing 3 degrees better. But honestly the idle temperatures don't really matter much. The H100 on average is cooling the CPU down to 25 degrees Celsius which are 77 degrees Fahrenheit, while the Thermaltake unit cools this i7 down to 28 degrees Celsius that are 82 degrees Fahrenheit. So all in all both coolers perform good here. But if you want to see a better test then we should move on to the load test. Here it seems like the two coolers are performing equally. On average I think you could say the CPU is running at 65 degrees. So did you expect that? It looks like these two coolers pretty much have the same cooling performance. 65 degrees Celsius that are 149 degrees Fahrenheit. So in the end I have to say there's almost no performance difference when it comes to cooling. But then I should mention little things that are different. The Corsa unit has louder fans than a Thermaltake unit. Yes, the performance on the fans may be better on the H100, but as you saw, these coolers perform equally, so it's always good when it's more silent. That's a benefit for the Thermaltake Water 2.0 Extreme. But in terms of pump noise, the Thermaltake pump was a little louder and it can get annoying if you're not used to it. But believe me, it's not that bad and you could surely get used to it. But wait, this was the second Corsa unit I had. I had to return the first unit because one fan was making grinding noises, then the fan controller on the pump was defect and last but not least the pump made terrible rattling noise. 
So I got it returned and this unit seems to be working flawlessly, no sounds or other problems. So keep in mind, the same thing could be with the thermal tick unit I tested. Maybe it was just mine that makes a little bit of a pump noise. Remember, pump noise is normal, but shouldn't enter the level of annoyance. As for the looks, both units look very good. In the end, I'd say it's more a thing of taste. Like the pump shape for example. I personally like angular shaped things more and that's why I prefer the Corsa unit when it comes down to the looks, but other people might like circular pumps more or don't care at all. Oh and as for the fan speed controlling you have to press the button here on the H100 to ramp up or lower the fan RPM. With the Thermaltic unit there's no need to remove the side panel, you just install the software to control the fan speeds. Well again even this can be a benefit or a drawback. On the Corsair H100 you could just decide to go with one setting and leave it as it is then. And with the Thermaltic Water 2.0 Extreme you have to install the software, therefore you need to connect an additional internal USB cable, that can be a hassle when it comes to cable management sometimes, and yeah, your HDD or SSD will have to load up a separate program on startup. It's not a big deal, but I just wanted to point that out. But in the end I don't know which option is better. These are benefits and drawbacks at the same time. So yeah, I really hope this quick comparison video helped you with the choice if you decided to go with one of these water cooling kits. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.